Hello, and welcome back to Coin Lady Channel. Guys, today, I received some positive news about XRP, but I don't think most people will understand why. As we all know, Bitcoin has been playing a little game and has recently burst beyond $50. Also, the market went under again, but generally speaking, it was a bullish day for cryptocurrency. A 3.7% increase in Bitcoin price at the time of recording, it was just under 50 grand. Quite a bit of Ethereum up. 5.6% up 7.5%. Alana Repins, check it out. XRP is up 1.3%. As we descend, let's see if anything noteworthy happens. Avalanche is up 5.5%. Polygon is up 4.4%. But where is the optimism of my friend? Looking nice, up 6.4% from the day before. As you can see, the cryptocurrency market is doing really well today. Right now. The Hooks PRs are officially open? That's the news, folks. It appears they will attempt this again. Listen, I'm going to tell you the truth, I don't believe Hooks is the solution. In my opinion, very few people on this planet are able to code using this. On the other hand, we'd like efficient smart contracts that run on the blockchain and don't slow it down. Whether or not this leads to upbuilding is something I just do not know. But I will tell you this, Richard, along with the other individuals involved, the PL Labs, and many others who are supporting this, is a development rock star. It seems to me that we need to give this some serious consideration. And I mentioned it back then, I didn't believe Ripple showed the right kind of respect for the developers who were putting in so much labor to get this done because they declined to evaluate it and kept it from being put to a vote. So, that's the main point, at least from my perspective. That Ripple is collaborating with third-party developers to thoroughly examine their proposed remedy. Beyond that, they rank among the most astute experts in the field. On top of that, Hooks might be the perfect answer. Maybe it does result in significant progress. The future will reveal whether or not this is the case. However, I think Ripple should give this some serious thought because of the independent developers that are putting a lot of effort into this network. Furthermore, there are means. Potentially obtaining programmability on that first layer, perhaps through hooks, here on the XRP Ledger Live would be monumental. Regardless of how you slice it, the most apps will likely be found in an Ethereum virtual machine environment if that's the case. However, they need to examine this thoroughly. If nothing else, it's out of respect, and we'll observe the outcome of this. Remember that Richard is the mastermind behind this, built the post wallet originally, and has been an XRP ledger builder for quite some time, the outcome will be determined by his efforts. Once again, they will give this the attention it deserves. Perhaps it reaches its intended audience and changes the course of events for us. Now that Nance has established the setting, the action will have to wait until late April to unfold. And I'll be honest, I chased CZ pretty hard, he was obviously involved in a lot of bullshit and did some questionable stuff. However, the outcome I had hoped for, that Nance would explode and bring us all crashing down, did not materialize. No investor losses occurred since he successfully negotiated a calm withdrawal while Binance remained intact. Also, I really hope he doesn't go to jail. Here, he would likely receive a sentence, such as house arrest in a fancy apartment or something along those lines. I still think he did a decent job overall. I was relieved to see that they had brought this matter to a close, as I knew it would be resolved in due course. They had reached a peaceful resolution or ensured that no one was hurt, the question was whether they would choose violence or peace. As he carried it home, he was extremely cautious about cryptocurrency. In my opinion, he performed a fantastic job. And I sincerely hope that he does not receive an excessively lengthy prison term, if he is indeed incarcerated. He may be freed with only a few days of home imprisonment. He has the potential to achieve great things here in the future, even though there weren't any ads during the Super Bowl, Jack Dorsey, dressed like Satoshi, was there to watch the game and show that crypto was still making waves. Last summer, Peter Peter Thiel put $200 million into cryptocurrencies, with half going into Bitcoin and the other half into a theory. He got in on the early announcement for the Bitcoin ETF, which is well known in the industry. 
The day this space really takes off is something we might never know. Large sums of money, though, have begun to take a position. They are aware of what is ahead. Right here, the following individuals may be unaware that settlement talks are sensitive and protected by attorney-client privilege. These discussions are complicated and secret. Because of this, there will be absolutely no indication that a settlement has taken place. Rumors of Ripple and SEC settlements are completely unfounded. This information is not known by anyone on Twitter. Trust me when I say that. I am perplexed as to why this has resurfaced. The settlement obviously couldn't take place. Unjust, but based on what we can see, if we want to read the signs, if we want to make an informed prediction, there doesn't appear to be any immediate signs of a settlement. Certainly, that is achievable. Once again, I have no idea what is causing these rumors to surface. Also joining us is Mark Fago, a former regional director of the SEC. He cautions us that although the SEC staff does negotiate a settlement in principle, it must first be approved by the five commissioners, which means there will be a wait before it is revealed. We may have solid evidence that a settlement had been reached, but the commissioners would reject it anyhow. There were whispers at the beginning of the case, and then it came to light that Gary Gensler was ripping settlements up in front of people. So, I assume that's what happened. In the end, it was all Gary Gensler's fault, he ought to have resolved this and all of his other court cases by now, but instead he has dug himself a hole. Hey there, Justin. Michael Saylor on Bitcoin reaching 50,000, it's only now that people are starting to grasp the magnitude of the demand for Bitcoin being driven by these ETFs, they've been absolutely phenomenal. We should be prepared for the possibility of downward volatility if we encounter any problems, this is a double-edged sword to keep in mind. Here we will examine one more piece that, in my opinion, may suggest that some trouble may be on the horizon. However, in the grand scheme of things, this will be significant. The crypto community and any potential users of this technology are irrelevant here, this is simply another way that large institutions can invest in the crypto market which will increase its value in the long run. A large number of wealthy investors should not self-custody. When used properly, this is an excellent tool. Being your own bank and able to conduct transactions without a middleman, self-custody, is still more important. It's an excellent investment opportunity, but that's not the point. And it will spread across all of crypto, beginning with Ethereum. We will now discuss other top-tier cryptocurrency assets. Finally, we see that some economists think the government has gone too far with its restrictive policies, and I hear you about how terrible things are. Disaster is looming on the horizon, in my opinion. If they continue for just a little longer, something will collapse. They should be cautious. Don't trust the fake news about the economy's fantastic performance or the jobs report that aired on CNN. Like its utter nonsense, President Biden has constructed the greatest economy in human history. This is not an ideal setting. I can confirm that the stock market is rising. I suspect something huge will crater, but only time will tell. They were late to react to inflation, and now they're going to be a little late to lift their boot off everyone's neck. We're in for a rough ride if they aren't careful. The question is, will the Federal Reserve act appropriately? Very unlikely. Things have spiraled out of control, thus they're often changing course. Additionally, there may be some volatility on the opposite side of the pivot. What do you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And, of course, like and subscribe are always appreciated. See you soon, bye.